Amen. Luke chapter 2, we'll read from verse 8 to 11, New Living Translation. Luke chapter 2, from verse 8 to 11, New Living Translation. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will, be, that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Amen. Amen. Of course, we all know that uh, Christmas, you know, is one of the most exciting time of the year, uh, the, 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 the period where we relive memories and create new memories. And of course, depending on the, uh, on the side of the economic map that you grew up on, um, you have some unique memories that, that, that you relive. You know, I remember, you know, growing up around Christmas, my dad usually gets us firecrackers that we use to terrorize people around the neighborhood, you know. <laughs> and, you know, you have those memories. Um, and so Christmas is such an exciting, exciting season. And the reason why it's most exciting is because we are celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us have experienced or witnessed the joy that comes with the birth of a baby. Uh, the intensity is then increased where there has been a delay. And of course, this, this year we had loads of testimonies of people who conceived and delivered their children after some, some 10 years, some 17 years. We had, we had a couple of 17 years. And we have a lot of people that, you know, that, that had their baby after a long delay. Uh, and we know how intense and palpable the joy is. Uh, the birth of Christ came with intense joy because the world was desperately in need of the Savior. The birth of Christ came with joy. His arrival would have profound effects on humanity for eternity. Now, even the arrival of John the Baptist, who would, you know, introduce the Savior, Jesus is foreigner, his arrival also produced great joy. I read Luke chapter 1 from verse 13 to 17, New Living Translation. He says, but the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness. And many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. And then he went on to give some guidelines. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to, Lord, to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. You will have great joy and gladness. Okay? So we see examples of two birth announcements after a long delay. After a long silence, can I prophesy over someone that is going through delay? I declare by the power of God, the hold of that delay is shattered in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, your own season of joy is here. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
So there was high expectation for the arrival of the Savior that God had promised his people. For centuries, there had been prophetic word released that there was a Savior coming. And so it was, there was high expectation for his arrival. And of course, this expectation was born out of the fact that we needed a Savior because of the destructive effect of sin. When sin entered our world, the devil had the room to bring about decadence. Despair came in, hopelessness came in, uh, sickness came in. Uh, so, so sin triggered the curse which has devastating effect on life on our platform. And of course, you know, a cursed life is a difficult life. And that's why, that was why we needed a savior. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, New Living Translation. Scripture says, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. That was why we needed a savior. And you know that sin makes man Satan's slave with an evil nature that drives him to do evil. So when sin came in, Satan had the opportunity to do, you know, to deal with us the way he wanted. Uh, Luke chapter 1, uh, sorry, uh, when, when humans malfunction, the earth mal malfunctions. You know, that's where we now have hatred, you have lust, you have wickedness, you have, uh, uh, you have, you have all those terrible things that man does to other man, uh, greed. And all these vices make life difficult. That was why we needed a savior. The world was and continues to be in desperate need of the saviors, of the savior. You know, individuals, families, governments, nations, economies need to be driven by love, not selfishness. But you cannot get to that level without the help of a savior because sin corrupted man's nature. So the arrival of the savior provoked and continues to provoke great joy. Amen. <laughs> I don't know if, I can't remember if I mentioned the title of my message. I didn't. Okay, so if you need a title, you can call it Joy at Christmas. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so the arrival of the Savior provoked and continues to provoke great joy. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, New Living Translation. The prophetic word that the angel released concerning Jesus, it says, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That was why we needed a savior. That was why Jesus came, to snatch us from the devastating effect of sin. Because, you know, we're, we're coming out of a pandemic, economic challenges and troubles everywhere. We are desperate for solutions. And Luke chapter 2, verse 10, New Living Translation, it says, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. And I'm reassuring someone here this morning, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. This good news of the, of the coming of Christ brings great joy to all people. Regardless of religious background, race, ethnicity, whatever it is, this good news brings great joy to all people. Remember the Christmas song, Joy to the World? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Yeah, let's sing now. Let us receive a king. Let every heart preparing room and never and nature shall sing and never and nature shall sing and never and never and nature sing. you are such a beautiful choir please put your hands together for yourself <laughs> when we ask, accept Christ our, as our savior from sin our nature changes that's why the, the good news of joy to the world is very important because when we accept Christ, 
all things are passed away. 2 Corinthians 5.17, New Living Translation, it says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Amen. <laughs> the old life is gone. A new life has begun. Since anyone who belongs to Christ, do I have people who belong to Christ in the house or online? <laughs> Amen. It says, has become a new person. I'm a new person. Amen. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And by the reason of this new life, we have capacity for joy. Amen. Capacity for joy. We don't have to look to any externality for our joy. Our joy doesn't have to depend on, on happenings. Amen. Because we are new people. We are new creature. Hallelujah. It's in us the joy of salvation. Because we have redemption from sin. We are forgiven. We, have, we were adopted as children and positioned as heirs. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 verse 30, the Passion Translation. Romans 8, 30, the Passion Translation. Scripture says, having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself, that he redeemed us, and transferred his perfect righteousness, adopted us, to everyone he called. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. I don't know about you, I'm glorified. <laughs> oh, somebody say to yourself, I'm glorified. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that is the source of our joy. That's the source of our joy. So even when life applies pressure on us, joy bursts out from our insight. Because that is what we hold inside. You know when you are pressed, it is what is inside that will come out. For some of us, it is joy that comes out. Amen. Amen. You know, I remember several years ago, I've shared this story before, you know, one, 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 one day like that, you know, I, I, took my, I, I, I took my son home from school. You know, I was going back you know, to the office and, you know, going uphill and, you know, this truck was coming downhill, lost brake, and then left his lane and faced me head on. You know, you know in, in split second, you do all your calculations. I did all my safety. Every option, there was no other option. You know, at that point, you can imagine for some people the kind of words that would come out of their mouth. You know, when I did and realized that there, were no, there, there was nowhere to go, it was only to receive it with thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, you know so, so I, I, I remember I just left the steering and said, thank you, Jesus. And then the guy came, rammed, rammed, crushed the engine, pushed the car, and then just short of turning into, into the ditch, the car stopped. So, of course, I lost presence of mind. And then after some minutes, it was like people were talking from afar. I was hearing, uh, I was hearing a voice say, your seatbelt is on. Get out of the car. Your seatbelt is on. Get out of the car. So I got out of the car and, you know, gratefully, door opened, seatbelt unbuckled. All the airbags deployed, engine crushed. I got out of the car and was standing outside, and people were looking, and then they were asking who was inside the car. <laughs> you know, after some time when I came to myself, so I was snapping the, the vehicle. And then so they saw me, are you the owner of the car? I said, yes. You came out of this car? Ah. One of them came down and said, ah, you must go to seven churches <laughs> <laughs> and do seven thanksgivings. <laughs> See, it is what is inside you that will come out when you are crushed. For us, it is joy. <laughs> I say for us, it is joy. <laughs> Amen. Luke chapter 6, 22 to 23, New Living Translation. It says, what blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When that happens, what, is, what, what, what does it say? Be happy. Yes, do what? Live for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets that same way. Amen. So when, when it comes, what does this say? Rejoice. Live for joy. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You can't find joy if you are not looking for joy. Uh, that was what we read in Habakkuk chapter 3 last week. Say, everything may be looking down, but what I am looking for is joy. Amen. 
That's what I'm looking for. Of course, you know, it's easy for you to be joyful. When the songs and the sound and you have people joyful around you. And that was why we said you need to depend on the Holy Spirit. You need to depend on the Holy Spirit. No matter what your condition is, there is reason to celebrate. Amen. Because Christ in us is the hope of glory. <laughs> Somebody excited about that. So regardless, regardless of whatever the economic, physical realities around you are, there is reason to rejoice. Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. The birth of Jesus brought us joy. Amen. <laughs> so you can have a reason to celebrate, right? And you can celebrate for no reason. Yes. Uh -huh. you, can, you can all by yourself. You can just be shouting. Just be shouting all by yourself. You know. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and you, know some, you know some people will be wondering what is sweeting. <laughs> you, just, you just shut them out. And you, are, you, just, you just rejoice for no reason. You know this season some people will be saying ah. There's nobody to take me out. If there's nobody to take you out, take yourself out. <laughs> take yourself out. You say, ah, I have not received any Christmas card. Buy one. Buy one. Address it to yourself. Then you look for somebody around you, give it to them to give it to you. <laughs> you, you, you create joy by yourself. <laughs> create joy by yourself. You know some of us, we postpone our happiness. We postpone our joy. When I have this, when I get this, stop postponing your joy. Enjoy it now. Now. <laughs> so whatever it is, I will be joyful. <laughs> I will be joyful. <laughs> I will be joyful. Ah, Regardless of whether the millions are in the account, the millions are not in the account. Uh, I said 1,000 go, I said 100 go, I don't, I don't have any go at all. I will be joyful. Amen. <laughs> And of course, you know, naturally, on the natural plane, life will not always feel joyful. Uh, uh, that's when the devil comes to want to knock you out of your game. You know, scriptures talked about the devil that he's here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he comes to steal, and to kill your joy, and to destroy. So, but you must be on guard. Nothing can steal my joy. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because God is for me. All right, so you know some of us suffer some disappointment and then we brood over it and, and then we forget what the scripture says. Ah, that all things work together for good. Uh, so whether it is beautiful or ugly, all things work together for good. That is the source of the joy. Amen. <laughs> and remember last week, count it all joy. Let me read James chapter 1, verse 2, the Passion Translation. It says, my fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy you can. Amen. So when you know who you are in God, and you know who you are in Christ, then the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. So we, we can rejoice and declare we have joy unspeakable, full of glory. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. And God wants us to be full of joy. Hallelujah. Uh, so Jesus speaking in John chapter 15 verse 11 in King James Version. He says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. My joy will be full. <laughs> oh, somebody declare it for yourself. My joy will be full. Regardless of what is happening around us, my joy will be full. <laughs> Amen. We have authority on earth now through Christ to destroy the works of the devil. But even then, things that happen on earth don't control our joy anymore. Why? Because our destiny is settled in eternity. Read Luke 10 from verse 17 to 20, New Living Translation. It says, when the 72 disciples returned, 
they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey, obey us when we use your name. Listen to Jesus' reply. He says, yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But then he paused. I imagine he paused. He says, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Amen. <laughs> see, see, see you, know, you know if somebody is casting out demons around you now, some of us will look at the person like one special person. But Jesus is saying that one is kindergarten. That cannot be the source of your joy, that you are casting out demons, that you are doing this, that you are doing that. Your joy is not performance-based. That's what he was telling them. He said, this one is not performance-based. He says, but rejoice because your names are registered. Your destiny is settled in eternity because you have some future in God, not in your circumstance. Somebody glad about that. Oh, hallelujah. So Christ was sacrificed on the tree, absorbing the consequences of sin. Then he triumphed over death after three days. So Luke started the story with joy, the announcement of the arrival of Christ. Then he concluded the story of Christ in joy. Luke chapter 24, 50 to 53, New Living Translation. It says, then Jesus led them to Bethany and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. He says, so they worshipped and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Hallelujah. You are returning home with great joy. You are going back to your business with great joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. He says, and they spent all their time in the temple praising God. Today marks the termination of sadness and sorrow around your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. For anyone experiencing sadness and sorrow, I declare today marks the termination. If you believe it, say better, amen. Amen. Notice joy is a strategy. Amen. Joy is what? It's a strategy. You you read the story of the children of Israel, how some, when when they are facing the enemies, God will say, yeah, blow trumpets. Say, sing, shout, rejoice. And say, go around Jericho seven times. And on the seventh day, seven times. And on the last one, blow the trumpet and shout. Joy is a strategy. It confuses the enemy. Amen. Amen. (laughs) So, so, Serve joy in your business. Serve joy in your house. And see whether God will not step in. (laughs) Amen. Uh, Ezra chapter 3, verse 10 to 13. New Living Translation quickly. It says, uh, we we read the story of the the rebuilding of the temple there. Ezra 3 uh, from verse 10 to 13. New Living Translation. Verse 10 says, when the builders completed the foundation of the lost temple, the priests put on their robes and took their places to blow their trumpets. And the Levites, descendants of Asaph, clashed their cymbals to praise the Lord. Just as King David had prescribed, with praise and thanks, they sang this song to the Lord. He is so good. His faithful love for Israel endures forever. Then all the people gave a great shout. Praising the Lord. Ah, Somebody missed an opportunity there. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) He says, praising the Lord because the foundation of the lost temple had been laid. Verse 12. But many of the older priests, Levites, and other leaders who had seen the first temple wept aloud when they saw the new temple's foundation. The others, however, were shouting for joy. The joyful shouting and weeping mingled together in a loud noise that could be heard far in the distance. See what was happening. There was an old temple that was destroyed. And then, you know, they were rebuilding it. And they got to foundation stage. Foundation. Foundation. And they were shouting and rejoicing and were joyful. Foundation. Some of us, God has done beyond foundation for you. Yet you are not rejoicing, you are not shouting. (laughs) 
But you see, you see these people, foundation, they were shouting, they were praising God. And then you saw there that there were some uncles and aunties of God. <laughs> there, that saw that, uh, what, 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 what are they excited about? If you saw the glory of the former temple, eh, and you know you have people like that, that are, that are in the prison of good old days. Amen. Say, ah, when things were good, ah, good old days. But listen to me, good old days has gone, gone forever. There are better new days. <laughs> there are better new days, better new days. Listen, to me. you know, I was discussing with someone during the week, and you know, I was, I was pointing our attention to the fact that, have you noticed that the cars on the road did not reduce? Have you noticed that people are constructing more than ever before? Yes. Have you noticed that some people made their first millions this year? Yes. Some people's business was the, this is their best year ever. Yes. She said, yes. I said to her, yes, it's the narrative that, is, that you buy that determines your reality. In this same economy that they are saying everything, hey, 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 hey. some people are living the best life, their best life, they are living it now. So choose the narrative that you will buy. Amen. So, so if the plan is to do 10,000 steps and you did five, rejoice. <laughs> there are people that have not been able to carry one. <laughs> rejoice. Amen. Let's close. <laughs> so how can we embrace the spirit of joy this Christmas? Number one, joy is found in God's presence. Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. Number two, joy flows from a thankful heart. Psalm 100 verse 4, enter with the password, thank you. Message translation, make yourselves at home, talk in praise. So you thank him, praise him, thank him for the ridiculous, and then you will experience the miraculous. So this, so in the coming days, spend time thanking him for everything that has happened in 2022. Thank him, just thank him. As you thank him, as that attitude of gratitude develops in your heart, you find that joy will naturally flow. Amen. Amen. And then thirdly, serve others and show them love. This is how we reflect Christ. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, New King James Version. In everything I showed you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Ultimately, serving others can bring us joy. I prophesy over you, this is your most peaceful and most joyful Christmas ever. In the mighty name of Jesus. So remember, if the devil tries to tamper with your properties, you have promises. That was what Jeremiah responded with. He says, oh Lord, your words were found and I did eat them. They are the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Nehemiah 8.10 says, and Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with a feast of rich food and sweet drinks. That's a command for someone that has been, that has been disappointed and, and, and glooming all week. This is direct instruction for you. Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks, drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. Says, this is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad. Why? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody declare, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Somebody shout it, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I declare once again, this is your best Christmas ever. In the mighty name of Jesus, no loss around you. In the mighty name of Jesus, as the joy of the Lord, it becomes your strength, sickness disappears from your body. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever is going down around you, I declare by the power of God, it begins to go up. In the mighty name of Jesus, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Just shock some people. You get into a place and everything is looking down, just shock them. Just shout. Let them be looking what, was, what is going on. Says. Say, I am a joy bringer. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Amen.